Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Steve Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live and uh, just a short take of the broadcast this evening, friends. Uh, as we're getting ready, i uh, going to try to bring in a late Shabbat message on Sunday. Uh, still working on things there, but uh, this is something very concerning. Is I watched today the news that came out. Two British soldiers seriously injured in Syria after ISIS missile attack. It's actually an anti-tank missile uh, that struck uh, their vehicle. And of course, uh, according to the Independent, uh, which came out a little bit later, said that the soldiers were injured. According to the uh, Amman News, it says they were actually killed. Uh, that's what their story says. Two, two, two British soldiers killed in ISIS attack. Now, this, of course, on the heels of what we reported the other day, once again, intelligence officials being arrested in uh, uh, Manbij, Syria. <clears throat> that was the stories that we were being shared with some, from contacts that we have uh, in the Middle East there that, that shared that information with us there. Uh, but now we're having the British as being attacked by ISIS. Now, on uh, the Jerusalem Post, uh, they're also weighing in on this, that the U.S. is going to keep troops there now much longer President Trump will kind of withdraw some. They're going to keep a, a, still a contingency force in Syria. Even uh, uh, Bolton has been pretty much asserting that we're not leaving anytime soon at this point now. Uh, you know, I just knew that something just had to be too good to be true, that President Trump was going to bring his troops out. Uh, even if President Trump means well, the deep state is going to make sure he stays there. In fact, it's kind of odd to me that, you know, ISIS... Uh, can be so well manipulated to make sure uh, that, you know, their handlers are making sure the U.S. stays in Syria. That should let you know that ISIS is definitely not there just to top of Bashar al-Assad out, out of their own initiative. This is a, this is a group that has a handler. And uh, the only way to make sure that uh, the United States and uh, uh, Britain, they all stay in the game here, this war against Syria is to make sure there is a loss of life, or at least an attempted loss of life. And uh, so that lets me know that ISIS has a handler of one nation or the other that has a great interest of the U.S. staying in there. Russia doesn't want them there. Uh, the Turks don't want the United States there. The Syrian government doesn't want the United States there. Uh, so that kind of narrows it down. And I hate to say it, friends, but that really narrows it down to who wants the U.S. to stay behind. Now, the Kurds, we could say the Kurds, but uh, I don't think the Kurds have much handling hope on ISIS. Uh, not to mention the, uh, the Syrian military has come to the Kurds' aid as well, uh, agreeing to, to back them up in the wake of the U.S. leaving. Uh, we know that Israel has a desire to make sure the U.S. stays there, so that puts my own people, my own nation in the spotlight. Hate to say it, but it's true. Yes, it does. Uh, so, you know, these are just things that just really bother me uh, to see that. Saudis as well would want the United States to stay. They've got a lot of money invested there. So we could say maybe the Saudis are controlling uh, the ISIS militants. Uh, but again, at the end of the day, we've got to weigh this out and figure out who really benefits from the United States staying there in the Middle East as they get ready to do a war with Iran. Uh, and, you know, listen, I just got a, 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 an email, my wife did actually, from Brother Richard over in Israel. Uh, he's a believing brother, been living in Israel for many years there. And he actually wrote to us and said that he, they believe that Netanyahu is going to be voted out uh, here in the next couple of months. But beforehand, they believe that Netanyahu is going to bring on a major war, which is something Saman Tov had said with us as well in Israeli News Live. He's going to bring about a major war in order to kill off a lot of Israelis. That's some pretty bold statement there. But, you know, I can certainly see it coming to pass. Saman Tov said, hey, he said, Netanyahu is the man that will do the job. He says, what do I mean by that? Not in a good sense, but bring about the prophecy. Two-thirds of the nation of Israel will die in a war. Kind of goes back to the days of the Holocaust, doesn't it? it? Seems like there were some other Zionist leaders out there that hated our people and were willing to allow them to go to the uh, death camps in Auschwitz. I know I had family that went there. Uh, and of course, uh, we know too well the stories from all the Jewish survivors that told about the, the elitists who are running the nation of Israel, even to this day, how that they were sending our own people to their deaths. 
Isn't it kind of interesting? They would not allow the United States to put sanctions on Germany because they'd worked out an agreement with the Germans to get their wealth over into Israel. Whereas those sanctions could have caused a halt to the war and it could have possibly freed a lot more Jews rather than going to their deaths in the Holocaust. But no, that thing called the transfer agreement brought a lot of our people to their deaths, even more so. In fact, almost a million, a million uh, Hungarian Jews were, lost their lives as a result of the Zionist movement not doing anything to save their lives. The Swiss, the Jewish uh, uh, a group there in Switzerland, uh, we might mind you. And by the way, this is all information documented by Jews, not, 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 not documented by the secular world. It's documented by the Jewish people themselves. So I, I, I'm really troubled at this. You know, another thing I'm troubled at as well, I keep seeing online over and over and over the, the destruction of homes of Palestinians, entire homes being destroyed because maybe their child went and did an act of terror in Israel. You know, this is why we have a court system this is why we have a judicial system in Israel. Those that are guilty were supposed to hold guilty of the crime. But you know, I'm really becoming more and more troubled with the leaders of Israel, and even if it's the religious community of permitting such of this, or even pushing for the destruction of an entire home. What about the mother there? What about her and her children? Why has she got to pay for the crimes of maybe a son, or maybe the father did it, uh, or even maybe it was a daughter? But you know, a lot of times it has nothing to do with the rest of the family. But instead, they take and they destroy the entire home. Now, some people might say, well, that's what they get for what they do, the acts of terrorism that they do. But, you know, we've got to look. Yeshua said, love your neighbor as yourself. Moses also said the same thing, right? But even the prophet Ezekiel, what did Ezekiel say? Let me quote to you Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20, right here, right? He says, uh, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteous of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So therefore, for us to go and destroy the home of someone that did not commit the act is totally wrong of us as a nation. What kind of precedent are we setting for the rest of the world when we don't even carry out the word of God the way we should? And don't give me the Talmud excuse either. I don't want to hear that. That's not the word of God. That is a bunch of rabbis that have a bunch of opinions about what Moses wrote and the prophets wrote. Moses and the prophets is the plumb line for the word of God. And this is what we should be going by. The nation of Israel does not need to be ran by Talmud. That is the worst thing that could ever possibly happen. And that's about what's going to happen in the rest of the world. Anyway, maybe I've said too much already, and I'm sure a lot of people don't appreciate it, but then maybe there are some that do appreciate it. By the way, this article right here in the Russian language says uh, that Russia, excuse me, Turkey has uh, rejected the United States Patriot missile in favor of the S-400, the Russia-made S-400. Uh, I have a feeling that there was a renege on the deal by Turkey once they saw that the United States deep state wasn't going to leave Syria, and that kind of peeved them off a little bit, which Erdogan is nothing but a crazy thug to begin with. Why he's even a president is beyond me. Uh, who, who elected the guy? I mean, this is really nuts. I mean, I think the people wouldn't want to get this guy out of office, but nonetheless, they're not going to do it. All right, I am about done with my rant for this evening, but uh, listen, tomorrow, let's get into some biblical insights here, discuss things that are going on, and share some uh, beautiful insights from the Word of God with you guys. That's where we need to go, and especially in light of all the evils I'm seeing my people do. You know, I mean, we forget, especially for Christians. I want to say something to you, my friends. You know, I, I, I love Israel. I love my people. But we need to start standing with those that are standing for Yeshua. You know, the secular government, the one that most Christians are standing and supporting and cheering on, these are the ones that are doing all the evils to everybody in the land. And not to mention, not only in the middle, in, in the land of Israel, but also in the entire Middle East as well. You know, we're not, they don't keep any of the commands of God. And yet we, you know, as believers that God said that, you know, our people were scattered because we were blind as a bat. That's why we were scattered in 70 AD. And we were scattered because of our iniquities. So we need to go and examine what were our iniquities to begin with. Why did we get scattered in 70 AD? What was, what was that magical number? 
And oh, by the way, too, this whole thing about Trump and this coin there, I keep getting people send me the video there, and it's a really nice video that a, that a, a British man made there, uh, challenging about the Third Temple coming up, and of course, how it's going to unite the world. Uh, and they don't want to call it a New World Order, but it's really as part of a New World Order is what it is. But they show Cyrus and the Cyrus Cylinder on there and Trump. And, you know, it was kind of interesting. And, and we're going to go into this in a separate message there. But I want to I, I want to show you something here. Not that picture there. By the way, Vital Zyme is very good, too, by the way. Anybody that's uh, up, oh, it's not on there. Let me see if I can pull it up real fast here. Um, yes, right here. Uh, this, this, I'm right there, my wife as well. Uh, whoop, I still get to that vital zyme. How did I manage to do that? Oh, that's not the one either, but at any rate, uh, Cyrus Cylinder's right here beside me here. A friend of ours, it was his father that I actually did the translation of the Cyrus Cylinder many, many years ago, and as well as his son also did the translation of the Cyrus Cylinder. On the Cyrus Cylinder, which by the way is on this Trump coin that they made with Cyrus, uh, it says on that cylinder right there, all right, that cylinder, Mar uh, they, uh, excuse me, Cyrus gives credit to Marduk and one other god for sending the children of Israel back to the land of Israel. Now, People like to make this like some great thing, like Trump as a Cyrus. Well, Cyrus served the devil. Two different devils, in other words. Now, our Bible says that it was uh, Yahweh that put it in his heart, or Yehovah that put it in his heart to, to, to go back to the promised land. I don't doubt that God caused him to, to do that, but he doesn't give him tribute for it. He gives Marduk and one other devil tribute for sending this back that's according to his own documented evidence right there i'll show you a little bit better picture of that as well let's see i know i've got one on here somewhere here it is uh where you can see this as well by the way that picture on my screensaver there is in israel it is during the wheat harvest uh but this is the Sarah cylinder right here this is the real deal this is not a replica or anything like that but this Sarah cylinder is where cyrus give credit to marduk so you really want to type Trump is that, that he serves devils? Well, I will tell you this. The third temple they're going to use for the Antichrist. So just think about it. What side do you want to be on? What side do we really want to be on? Because it's just like it was 2,000 years ago. The Sanhedrin's back in control. They're going to actually be in much greater control. Rome, the, the Vatican, has tremendous control, as they did 2,000 years ago over the Holy Land at that time. And, of course, they've got a bunch of puppets uh, that are running the whole show, a, a, a false high priest. They've already elected a false high priest there for the third temple. This is what you want to stand for, and this is what you want to cheer on in animal sacrifices when Yeshua has already given his life for the entire world? Think about it. And by the way, 2,000 years ago, Yeshua was here, his apostles were here, and the ones that were being persecuted was his believers. Unlike that of today, it is again the same. Uh, the true believers of Yeshua, the friends that I have in Israel that stand for the truth, that are persecuted, that don't dare speak very much because they'll be thrown out. In fact, that's the other thing Brother Richard was saying to us. He said the persecution is going to come against the believers like no other time in the history of the world when they bring this war on Israel and they thin the people out. They're going to really go after the true believers. Oh, I'm sorry, don't forget, if you have connections to Rome, and they might be those that Jesuits that, don't, that speak against Rome because they've been paid to play that part, but yet they can still boldly speak as they're speaking in the name of Christ and Israel. Gosh, Jesuits, don't you get, do you guys understand what a Jesuit is? A Jesuit can play any part he wants to let you fall for, the, fall for it and, and th think it's right. All right, I've said enough. Anyway, blessings to you all. Thank you, and thank you for your support of this ministry, IsraeliNewsLive.org. God bless you, and uh, tomorrow we're going to get into some serious things. I'm Steve Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom, shalom. Talk to you soon.